In 1965, a new religion called Ekankar was introduced to the world. It claimed to be an ancient spiritual path that had existed for thousands of years which was now being revealed to the public after being underground for a long time. In 2004, Ekankar's U.S. membership was estimated to be over 36,000 and the religion is present in over 100 countries. But the truth about its origins are quite different than the mythology created by its founder, Paul Twitchell. Throughout the 1950s and early 1960s, Twitchell had been a student of Swami Premananda in the Church of Absolute Monism, Kirpal Singh, the founder of Ruhani Satsang, and L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology. For a time, he made his living writing articles dealing with spirituality and the occult for magazines such as Orion, Search, and The Psychic Observer. In the mid-1950s, Twitchell claimed that Kirpal Singh's spirit, or light body, appeared before him numerous times in his Washington, D.C. apartment. His book, The Tiger's Fang, contains the teachings that Singh supposedly imparted to him during these visits. At least that was the original story. After reading Twitchell's manuscript of The Tiger's Fang, Kirpal Singh objected to some of its contents. That is when Twitchell broke with Rouhani Satsang and set out to found Ekankar. In order to make this new religion appear unique, he had to disguise its origins in Ratswami Yoga, the school from which Kirpal Singh and Rouhani Satsang emerged. Twitchell began to reissue the articles that he had submitted to various magazines, only this time he changed the names of the people who had appeared in the original versions. Thus Kirpal Singh became Sudar Singh and Swami Premanana became Ribazar Tars. These revised articles and invented masters formed the basis of the religion of Ekankar. Not only did Twitchell create imaginary spiritual masters and claim that Ekankar was the only true way to enlightenment, he claimed that he was the living Ek master, or barring a Hindu word, the Mahanta, the highest of all states of consciousness. In addition to Twitchell's fantastic claims, large portions of the Ekankar books that he wrote are plagiarized. One of his sources was The Path of the Masters by Julian P. Johnson. In this example, we see how Twitchell plagiarized one of Johnson's paragraphs almost word for word. It is through the plagiarism and inconsistencies in Ekankar publications that David C. Lane, an undergraduate student at Cal State Northridge, was able to expose Ekankar as a fraud. In 1977, Noting the similarities between Radha Swami and Ekankar, Lane wrote a term paper comparing the two for an undergraduate religious studies class. Lane sent a copy of his paper to Ekankar headquarters, which at the time was located in Menlo Park, California. After Twitchell's death in 1971, Darwin Gross became the living Ek master. Under Gross's leadership, Ekankar threatened Lane with a lawsuit if he were to publish his paper. Lane continued his investigation and in 1979, he published a limited edition of The Making of a Spiritual Movement, The Untold Story of Paul Twitchell and Ekankar. It was Lane who uncovered Twitchell's invention of the Ek Masters. Lane's book thoroughly catalogs the instances of plagiarism and fictionalization in Ekankar books. The leadership of Ekankar apparently does not want the truth about its origins to become known as this would certainly cause some members to leave, and members are how Ekankar makes its money. The members of Ekankar are either unaware of or are not bothered by the lies upon which their faith is founded. Of course, members do sometimes leave, but there is heavy indoctrination against this. Ford Johnson, a prominent Ekist, recently left the religion after 30 years and wrote an expose. In his book, Confessions of a God Seeker, he cites some of the threats in Ek literature that are meant to discourage members from leaving. In this example, members are warned that they will face spiritual decay and even health problems if they leave. Harold Klemp, Ekankar's current leader, has also admonished those who are having doubts about the religion, indirectly referring to them as weeds. If you are interested in learning more about the origins of Ekankar, visit one of these websites.